Okay, is this thing on? Hi everyone, welcome to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Rasmussen. If you're like me, one thing I really struggled with when I first got into iOS was navigation patterns. How do you set up your app so that you've got great navigation, you can respond to events deep into your app, and you can update views to give a really nice, clean architecture for just handling basic navigation in your app. If you've struggled with this, like me, come on in and I'll take a look and show you how one app I recently worked on solved this problem. So to tackle this problem, let's take a look at it in four parts. First, we're gonna take a look at what the challenge is. What are we really trying to do here by setting up this navigation architecture? Secondly, we'll then go over the solution. I'll show you basically how I solved it, the approach I took, and some other good techniques when you're generally trying to solve problems like these. Thirdly, we'll then walk through the code and I'll show you how everything works. And then finally, I'll show you the number one thing you need to remember when you're doing this sort of work, and that is to how to add these safe and remove child view controllers. So make sure you stay to the end for that. Okay, but let's just jump into the problem and see where this comes up in the real world. Okay, so one place this comes up in the real world is in your everyday Starbucks app. Here you can see we've got a basic, uh, well, it's not a very basic application. I guess there's a lot going on in here. And actually, we build this app from scratch, this very first home view. If you're interested in that, be sure to click on the link in the top there. But basically, what you can see here is we've got um, a basic application. We're on a home screen. There are some tabs at the bottom that we can click through. There's also one here called Scan. But notice on the home screen, if we scroll up and down here, there's also a scan in store button there. So that's another way of clicking on that and getting to the scan tab. Now, this is something we often need to do in applications. We can't always rely on the user to navigate to where we'd like to go by clicking, say, the tab button at the bottom. So how do we do that? How do we receive that event, navigate to where we want to go, and set up a nice, clean architecture for doing that? Now, before we jump into the solution of how we're actually going to solve this, let's just remind ourselves the basic infrastructure or architecture that we need every time we build an app. And let's just start from the very beginning with building a new application. So here, obviously, we're not using storyboards. We're going to create this app all programmatically. And when you do that, the very first thing you do is you get a window with a root view controller and on it, you set a view controller. That's kind of the basic way to create a new app programmatically. This is how we kind of start. And this is what our app's gonna look like. It's just gonna display whatever view controller we pass in there in the view controller of the window, and it's gonna look like this. Of course, we can get more sophisticated. We could add a navigation bar in there, for example. So we could create a navigation bar, pass into it our very first child view controller, and then display that in the root view controller. And of course, we can get more and more progressive if we wanted to build like the Starbucks application, which happens to have a tab bar. We could add a couple of view controllers, embed those in navigation controllers, put those into a tab bar controller. And as you can see, we're getting a more and more sophisticated application. Now, of course, the challenge is that right now, App Delegate is the very top high level piece of our application. It would be nice if we had another layer in there where we could have something be responsible for displaying all these child view controllers, but also receiving events as they come up through the app. And that's the main idea behind this main view controller. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna create a main view controller, which we're gonna put right at the very top in our root view controller, and it's gonna be responsible for handling all those events and everything that goes on. It's gonna present the tab bar, it's gonna decide what view to show, and it's also gonna register and listen for events as they happen in the app. So that's the overall picture of how we're gonna solve this. Let's now jump into the code and just see how it's all going to work. So in this case, what we've got is we're starting in our app delegate here, and this is a programmatically built uh, app. All we're gonna do is we're gonna start by creating that main view controller and passing it in right to the view, root view controller there at the very top. Then if we go look inside the main view controller, this is just a standard view controller. It's gonna be responsible for creating the tab bar. So in this case, it's gonna create a tab bar. 
it's going to set up some home and scan view controllers, which is what you see here, depending upon what we select. It's going to embed those in a navigation controller, just in case we had sub views we wanted to drill down into, we could do that. And of course, it's just going to set all those up in its own tab view controller and present those. So now when this init's there's a present method here, which is basically going to add the tab bar controller to the child. And this is really important. This is, this is basically the three steps you need to go through every time you want to add a child view controller to the view control you're in. You first add the child like this. You add the sub view of the view control you're adding by passing in its view. And then you also call this did move. That hooks up all the lifecycle properties, view did load, view will appear, all that kind of stuff. That's just something we need to do when adding a child view controller to a parent. Okay, let's talk responder chain. What is it? Your father's lightsaber. This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. Not as clumsy or random as a blaster. An elegant weapon for the more civilized age. So responder chain is one of those seldom used communication patterns. I know a lot of people out there don't really like it. They feel it's too old school, inelegant. You can't do many things with it, but it can be a really elegant solution in the right context. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna jump to our home view controller, but basically what we're doing here is when we add that button, there's, there's two things we typically do with a button. One is we can be responsible for handling what happens when that button gets pressed. So we can register ourselves, uh, perform scan action. That's a method we need to implement. And when we hit this button, we will indeed trigger this if we add ourselves as a target action here. So that's perfectly fine. Here you can see we're printing it out and we are indeed getting the result there. But the other thing that's really cool about responder chain is you don't have to handle it where you are. For example, by setting the target here to be null, nil, what we're actually doing is firing that all the way up the view hierarchy. There's something that we're basically calling next responder on every view in the hierarchy. And it's a really cool way of passing things all the way up until it finds someone who implements that functional method signature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set nil here. We're gonna hit scan and hit type, and that's gonna pass it all the way up to our main view controller here, which just happens to implement this did tap scan method. So that's how we can pass a message from way down in a child here, all the way up to the top, and then ultimately deal with it. So here we can look at all of our children, remove ourselves and add ourselves like this. That's basically the, the beauty of this pattern. The rest of the code doesn't really do too much. The scan view controller here, you can see does absolutely nothing. Uh, we don't really care. We just want to see that we can navigate to it. But basically all the magic is just in setting up that initial view hierarchy, uh, hitting that button. And here's some syntactic sugar I've just added around the selector here. So the reason why I'm able to go and add this did uh, tap scan here is I've added a private extension to selector, which actually mimics wraps the selector I'm actually going to respond and then if you have a lot of these going on in your app sometimes it can be handy to collect them all in one place like the app I'm currently working on on my current uh, project we've got a lot of these this is a core architecture so we might have you know 20 or 30 of these going on in our app so I just wanted to show you how you could encapsulate and capture all these in one place by defining a protocol called in this case the Starbucks responder which has a did tap action and that's what we can implement in our main view controller and basically just implement it here. And that's kind of how it works. Now, the one thing I kind of glossed over, which is absolutely crucial for you to understand when adding and removing child view controllers is this seemingly really innocent and simple looking code here. Basically, how do you add another view controller to the view controller you're in? Well, we saw how to do it here with these three steps. You have to add a child, add the view of the child, and then call did move. Those are the three steps you always need to go through when doing it. But before you do that, it's also important to make sure you've removed any child view controllers in there, which is what you see with this code here. So children is a property on a view controller, which you can get. And by walking through each child in the children and removing them from the super view, you can ensure that when you go to add, everything is set up. Now add here is actually a convenient 
extension I got from my good friend John Sundell, who runs an excellent podcast, uh, Swift on Sundell. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, this is an extension on View Controller, which just wraps these three methods together. So instead of having to explicitly type these three lines, I can just call add. And if I wanted to remove, I could do the same thing here. I could remove and it will do these three methods here all by themselves as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's one way we can basically go about setting up our architecture, create a high level main view controller, send all the messages up there and let it deal with and figure out how to present things as a result of those actions. Spiking is a really good technique. If you ever want to play with this stuff, I highly recommend just setting up a simple application and trying things out. All the source code, of course, is available to you. Just go to the Swift Arcade GitHub repo, download it, and in there, you'll see this main view controller and how it all works. And basically just enjoy playing with this. There's no one way of setting these things up, but I know app architecture, especially in the beginning when you're first getting started, can be really confusing and hard. So, so keep coming back to the channel. Uh, do hit like and subscribe if you like this content. And of course, uh, leave a comment. Tell me if there's other app architectures you're interested in seeing built. Let me know if you've got different solutions to these and just, uh, yeah, just let me know how you're doing. I'd love to hear how things are going. Okay, take care everyone. Thank you so much for coming. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.